Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Minister Justin Dillard. I thank the Lord for you all joining me one more time for another worship service. And I thank the Lord for all that He is doing for you and your family. Lord, I thank the Lord for blessing us, our going out and our coming in. Lord, I thank you for blessing our hands. Lord, I thank you for touching our minds. Lord, I thank you for restoration. Lord, I thank you for reviving someone right now. Lord, I thank you for delivering someone right now. And Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In no other name but the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Our scripture for today is James 2, 20, and also Psalm 66, verse 18. We're going to start off with those two verses, and those are our call to worship scriptures. Faith without works is dead. Psalm 66, verse 18. So the first scripture was James 2, verse 20. Faith without works is dead. The second scripture is Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. We want the Lord to hear our prayers. We want the Lord to answer us. We don't want anything to be hindering us from the Lord answering us and coming to our rescue. We thank the Lord that the Lord is gracious. He's mighty in battle. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of His holy word. Now I would like to go over to a song. I need more of you. I need more of you. Whatever I need to do to get to you, I'll do. I need more of you. I need more of you. Whatever I need to do to get to you, I'll do. I'll do, Lord. I need more of you. Yes, I do. I need more of you. Whatever I need to do to get to you. I'll do, yes, Lord, I need more, I need more of you, I need more of you. I need more of you, Jesus. Whatever I need to do to get to you, I'll do. I need more of you. I really do. I need more of you. Whatever I need 
to do to get to you I'll do whatever I need to do to get to you I'll do I will obey, obey, I will obey, obey, I will obey, obey, I will Whatever I need to do to get to you, Lord, I'll do. Praise the Lord for that song. I used to sing that song at a church that I used to attend. When I was living in Central Florida, I thank the Lord for that song. I thank the Lord for you all. I call your attention to the scripture or the message of today. And it is coming from 1 Peter 4, verse 18 and 19. 1 Peter 4, verses 18 and 19. The scripture reads, and I'm coming from the contemporary English version. It reads, if good people barely escape, what will happen to sinners and to others who don't respect God? Verse 19, if you suffer for obeying God, you must have complete faith in your faithful creator and keep on doing right. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Now to a song. The message title on today is, There's No Time to Play Games with the Devil. There's No Time to Play Games with the Devil. The objective the objective for today is God is greater than the devil. God is greater than the devil. You see, God kicked the devil out of his house. The devil is not playing games in our government, schools, with our children, adults, and in the workplace. The devil is not playing games in our streets, in communities, our supermarkets, in our, the places where we travel, on the airplanes, no matter where it is, the devil is not playing. Look at what is going on in the family and in the mind of people who play with the devil. We have no time to lose. There's no time to play with the devil. When we play with the devil, the devil wins because he has been playing this game longer than us. The devil is real and hell is real. Not too many people want to go to hell. 
Some may be bold enough to say that they want to go there. They are deceived by the devil. Scripture says in Isaiah 5.14, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. The devil wants us to keep playing his game until it costs us our soul. Mark 8.36 states, What will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? Romans 6.23 states, Sin pays off with death, but God's gift is eternal life given by Jesus Christ our Lord. The scripture one more time. If good people barely escape, what will happen to sinners and to others who don't respect God? If you suffer from obeying God, you must have complete faith in your faithful Creator. And keep on doing right. Background on the writer of First and Second Peter. Some of us are familiar with the Apostle Peter in the Bible. He was the first one to fight when he cut off the soldier's ear. I heard one preacher say that when Jesus repaired the soldier's ear, Jesus performed the first plastic surgery. Or maybe you remember Peter saying, I won't do that. Peter said he wouldn't deny Jesus, but later did three times. There are many other instances of Peter being with one of them being Peter being affirmed by Jesus when Jesus commended Peter for saying that Jesus is the Christ. So Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Another account that is recorded in Acts was Peter was locked up for serving the Lord. And they would not let him out. The church prayed so hard, and, and an angel of the Lord woke him up, and there was a jailbreak. God knows where we are, and nothing can stop him from getting to us. The overview of First Peter is encouragement to believers who are being persecuted because of their faith. And this is coming from the Bible handbook. This is me talking. What is so interesting that during this time the Christian faith spread like a wildfire. The Roman Empire felt threatened. This event occurred around 65 AD. It is not new. There is nothing new under the sun. How many people are threatened by the truth today? How many people are allergic to the truth? The Bible states that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The Bible handbook states that the first and second Peter epistle were written by the Apostle Peter, the disciple who became the leader of the Christian movement during the early movement in Jerusalem. Acts 2, 14 through 41. 
to our scripture. 1 Peter 4, 18 through 19. If good people barely escape, what will happen to sinners and to others who don't respect God? If good people barely escape, what will happen to sinners and to others who don't listen to God? What will happen to sinners and others who don't care about God? What will happen to sinners and others who don't reverence God? What will happen to sinners and others who ignore God? What will happen to sinners and to others who ignore God or don't care about God? If you suffer for obeying God, you must have complete faith in your faithful Creator. That can be a message point right there. Have faith in the faithful Creator. Have faith in the faithful Creator. And we know that God created the heaven and the earth. Point number two. Keep on having faith in God. So that means we have to keep on doing good. Trust the Lord and do good. We must keep doing good. So the first point is, have faith in the faithful creator. And the second point is, keep on doing good. Keep on doing good. When I mean good, I mean keep being godly. Keep serving the Lord with your whole heart. Keep loving others. Keep giving. Keep seeking God. That's what I mean by doing good, doing right. The title, There's No Time to Play Games with the Devil. The objective is God is greater than the devil. God kicked the devil out of his house. Praise the Lord. The devil has been doing his thing for a long time. But God. Praise the Lord. But God. How many people have a but in a but God in their spirit? But Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But God. Genesis 8.1 But God remembers Noah and all the wild animals and, live, and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. How many can attest or can testify that God remembered them? We thank God that he doesn't need to take this and that to enhance his memory. God's memory is good. Praise the Lord. God knows what he's doing. God is not practicing. 1 Corinthians 3, 6. I planted it, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And point number three, God has the final say-so. God has the final say-so. And here's how we know. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Who wants to be blown out like a candle and be no more? Second Thessalonians 2 8 again. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with 
the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Revelation 20 verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I don't want to end up there. How many people ever cooked with grease and been burnt? Or many of you have seen the effect of what the oven does to food when the oven is turned on. And food is placed in, in the oven. We do not want to be in the devil's oven. His oven is hotter than that of the king that told the men to make it seven times hotter and place Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in it. In closing, God wants the very best for us. God sent us Jesus, his only begotten son, to save us from sin, the devil, and eternal damnation. Whosoever will, let him or her come to Jesus. First, we must repent and ask for forgiveness if we do not want to miss heaven and go to hell. We can no longer allow the devil to trick us that we can keep doing wrong and go to heaven. Next, believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus is alive. My brothers and sisters, if that was you and you said yes to Jesus and no to the devil, you are saved. We thank God for you making that leap of faith on today. Praise the Lord. I would like to play a song. I thank the Lord for the time that we have spent on today worshiping the Lord. And the beauty of his holiness. And now I would like to play a song.
thank the Lord for my cousin, Dr. Maria Watkins, and how she has blessed us with the song, I Surrender All. And it is time for us to surrender all to Jesus, to wave the flag. Lord Jesus, please come into my life. Please make us over again. Please help us, Lord, to stop doing what we did before that didn't work. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives right now, creating in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renewing the right spirit within us, restoring to us the joy of thy salvation, and uplift us, uphold us with thy free spirit. Lord, we thank you for changing someone right now. We thank you for arranging something, an appointment, Lord, for a new job, new opportunities, giving someone witty ideas. Lord, we thank you for how you're turning it around for someone out there listening to this message. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory, Lord, for their, their commitment or their recommitment to you, Lord. And we just give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In no other name but the precious name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. To the benediction, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all and everyone said amen, amen, and amen.